Having a single place to explore hundreds of AI models and being able to test out the functionality really quickly with no code is what the model garden is all about. Supported by Google Cloud, you know it's going to be good. I love wandering around the garden, so let's dive into using Model Garden and what some of its features are. If you enjoy this, give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you're exploring in the garden. Let's go. Right, well, what is the Model Garden? Well, before we start, if you haven't already signed up to Google Cloud, check the links in the description or in the card above over here. Right, so once you've signed up for Google Cloud, you're going to go through the basic setup and um, you're gonna land over here. So how do I find the model garden? Well, first things first, you're gonna go into your navigation menu over here. And if you haven't already pinned Vertex AI, you can pin it. If you don't know where it is, you can click on more products and find it in the bottom over here. Or you can just type in Vertex AI and click on Vertex AI. This will take you into the uh, Vertex AI studio. What we're gonna do now is click on model garden. All right, so here's the place where you find what you are looking for. So on the left hand side is your categories of the um, large language models or tasks or image generation that you would like to do. You've got an opportunity to search for models. You've got your foundation models and you've ultimately got your fine tunable models. Um, so really, really sort of descriptive. You can go in and have a look at it and you can say, all right, cool, what is Cody for code completion? Well, it generates code based on prompts, good for code suggestions and minimizing it. All right, so these are all sort of model cards that you can use um, as a good starting point. So have a read through it, determine what the problem is that you're trying to solve. Um, if you wanna get some sort of chat type of things that you wanna get going, uh, language models over here. All right, so um, these are basically all gonna be almost like your barred chatbot kind of things. If you're looking for uh, generation, you can go to your tasks, so you can go to generation over here and you'll get your Gemini Pro and ultimately anything that's gonna generate inf information for you. So you've got a couple of text, um, text to image over here as well. And um, yeah, if you wanted some open source stuff, so basically wanted to have a play around with any of the open source models, um, you can go down to the bottom over here and you can click on open source and you'll basically see all the models that are available in open source. So Mistral is quite a popular one out there at the moment, um, basically fine tuned. Vicuna is also pretty um, um, popular as well, fine tuned on the Llama. And um, yeah, so this is all the, these are all the model cards that you're able to play with. Right, so now you know which model cards are available to you. Well, how do we use them? Well, I'm gonna show you two scenarios here. One where there's a foundation model that's already created in a beautiful interface for you. And one where you have to go into the CoLab environment and basically step through the code. Uh, both are really simple to use and I'm gonna show you both right now. So let's go. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, create the first one which is the chat um, so basically it's called palm to chat and it's basically have a conversation so all you do is you click on the model card over here you can click on view details and it will basically give you an idea of what it does how it works and what the use cases are so customer support technical support personas and a website companion so really really sort of descriptive and ultimately, if you wanted to do it in code, you could do that. But I'm not going to do that now. Let's just go open the prompt design and a very familiar interface. Basically, go chat bison. All right, over here. So you can pop in your context if you wanted to. Um, you can have a new row uh, for your user and outputs. So let's do a chat and um, let's make it like that. So um, how are you today? I am well, I am looking to build a motorcycle. Can you help? All right, so basically, as you can see here, it's a chatbot uh, using the chat bison. It gives you easy um, access to the temperature, which is basically to select the, um, the, the quality of your outputs. It's ultimately got your token limits. So ultimately, um, setting these lower or higher will give you more response and output, and you've got your advanced options. So that's really, really cool. You can click on save, and you can just say here, my test, for bison chat 
Okay, all right, so now these are all gonna be models that you've got um, available to you. So if you wanted to find the models um, or your exist your um, chats, what you can do is just go over here to your My Prompts and you can test this over here. All right, so really cool. Let's go back to the model garden and the second scenario that we're gonna test out is the owl um, object detection model which basically takes an image and scans for any objects that it can find um, this is just going to be ready to show you how to use the collab environment so search for the model or you can just go back into model garden and we're going to click on the owl and what it's going to present you now is similar documentation so overview the use cases documentation and any pricing um, just note that all of these um, uh, models and things that you do you consume credits within the vertex environment so just keep an eye on your billing uh, make sure that you obviously stay on top of these things um, or else you could get a bit of a bill but yeah that's not the point of this video let's just show you how to work with this so click on open notebook and this will open up the Google um, Colab enterprise version so this is secure it's safe it's your environment and basically it's going to open it up like this um, it'll ultimately show you on the left hand side your notebooks um, anything that you've already created and on the right hand side over here is your connect to your virtual machine and um, if you wanted to just check some more options over here you can get your file edit etc uh, click over here right name and say rename <coughs> and let's just call this um, uh, my test collab first okay and hit rename um, here's all the um, steps of how you would do it so really really intuitive so if you need to create a storage bucket or if you need to create a billing account or anything like that uh, really simple just follow the links um, I've already popped in my information over here and um, what we're gonna do now is run it and what we're gonna do first is just connect to a runtime and this may take a, a minute or two Okay, so once the environment's been provisioned, you'll see a little tick mark over here and it'll say what has been, uh, what's happened. All right, so now the best thing you can do, or the easiest thing you can do is click on these cells one at a time. If you filled in anything and you're pretty confident, you can just click on runtime and say run all, but we won't do that now. I just wanna make sure that we have completed all of our steps. So let's just click on one cell at a time and you'll see a little tick and you know that it's worked. Okay, so this is ultimately all the things here and what we can do is hit that button and what you'll notice is it'll start installing the uh, relevant uh, libraries that are needed for the application and it's going to authenticate you. So this environment already in authenticates you in your Vertex environment. It's an enterprise solution here. You don't have to go and do weird things. So let it just install all the libraries okay so it's basically asked you to restart it it doesn't really matter it does it automatically in the background so now we can just hit this button over here and we can initialize the vertex api we're going to define our uh, constants we're going to do some functions and import some libraries all right so as you can see pretty simple and um, what we're going to do now is deploy the endpoints. Uh, so this is, as it says over here, it's going to take up to 15 minutes to complete. All right. Um, but what it's basically doing is it's going to, um, once it's uh, once you've clicked the play button, it will install all of these um, models, create an endpoint in your Google Colab uh, model registry so that you can able that you're able to connect to it. Um, and basically, the next one you click on is this one over here. And it's going to basically say download the image and this is your image that you're looking to do so if you want to get the image from your um, environment or if you wanted to get it from the internet or if you want to get anything like that um, you can basically pop in these things over here and what it's going to basically do is pass the instance to the endpoint and predict what's in the picture the, um, the ultimate answer is over here there's cats in the boxes and here's your probability scores and that's what it looks like and then ultimately once you've run everything you can click on clean up resources so I recommend you clean up the resources after you've done the testing just so that you don't rack up any um, cons um, any credits right so two easy scenarios in the model garden hopefully that was fun and enjoyable for you if you like this video like subscribe check out my other videos 
and see you soon.